Hi, I'm Mike Turner, Senior Designer with DG Design, and uh, welcome back to episode two. In this episode, we're going to be looking at modelling work in Alias to define the core geometry of our autonomous electric vehicle concept before we begin considering the variant details. I hope you enjoy the show and uh, I hope you find it interesting and informative. Thanks very much. Okay, so to get the uh, project started, I dropped a canvas so that I could understand the 3D sketch relative to the basic engineering block model, if you like, that I'd, I'd got. Uh, and then out of this, I'm kind of extracting some principal surfaces and started to look at the roof, just very simple um, uh, edit point curves. Uh, just looking to um, put a bit of curvature into that roof profile. Uh, so playing around with the curvature plot a little bit and then basically copying and pasting a pair of those curves along to create a roof profile that I can then just skin. It's very simple planar surfaces. It's intended to be simple to manufacture as a product could be uh, perhaps fabricated um, or even, even a bit simple vac forming. So now we're looking at the front end and we're, we're copying curves across to just get a general feel for what that, that front end uh, character would look like. So applying a, a little bit of curvature to the plan section, uh, just checking that, making sure the cur curve comb looks reasonable. Um, and then we're, we're basically, in the first instance, I'm basically skinny between the two to, to just get a feel, a first off feel for how that sort of resultant shape might look. Uh, and then fine tuning the CVs a little bit and trimming it back so we can start to see what that looks like. Now the character at this point was going in the right direction, but when I was looking at it from the front, which you'll see in this next sequence, the uh, detailed shape of the profile uh, is a result of the curved front surface and the um, draft surface. And I wasn't quite happy with how that sat, so in the end I elected to duplicate the curves so that I could keep all lines parallel and true to each other. So basically use that to then trim the front surface and then I used a freeform blend to join up the two with just a little bit of proportional crown on the surface. Um, just to give it a little bit of pump, give it a little bit of character. And the overall look of that is now much closer to what I want. Uh, making minor adjustments there to sort out the alignment. The character's right, so then it's a case of running a fillet around the front end to really tidy up the looks and give me what I'm after. So this is basically a caudal fillet that I drop in next that just runs around the perimeter and just gives me a clean, finished look. So now we can sort of look at to adjust the lower region. So we're sort of extending that forward to create sort of a, a lower bumper, if you like, just something ahead of the wheels uh, to get, get things looking a bit more planted, a bit more purposeful. Um, very simple fillets and intersects. But the character of this is, yeah, it's it's already looking along the lines of the sketch. And now I'm using a tubular offset to start to add a bit more detail and a trim profile to that front surface. So what we're doing is we're trimming it back to create almost like a gasket between the main bodywork surface and what is gonna be a front display screen by the time the design's finished. Now into that front screen, we're also looking to um, put some sort of light detail look, again, according to the sketch. So we're just putting curves on, we're applying fillets and starting to project so that we can see what will eventually be that light shape. And we can just get a feel for, for how that's starting to look. And then within, within that profile is actually defining what will ultimately be the display screen region. Uh, this was it as a first pass, but I wasn't very happy with that. I wanted to take it up a little bit further and down a little bit further so that the screen was a bit more dominant. But again, this is just playing around with the design now, just looking at the character of it to come up with something that we like the general look of. And yeah, overall, that's kind of going in the right direction now. So it's a case then of duplicating and mirroring to the other end because the design is, is based around very much sort of a, a push me, pull you kind of look. So the back is the front, you've got common parts at each end. And that's all looking pretty good. So now we're moving emphasis to look at the fenders. We're putting some basic curves in there just to get a, a feel for what that revised fender profile should look like. And I wanted something that was more angular rather than just radial following the, the lines of the uh, tires. So here we've got some curves in space. 
and we're playing around with CVs, put a little bit of loft in there, just so that you've got something that's got a bit of shape in plan view uh, and adds a bit more design interest. So now I'm copying curves to create sort of the upper edge of what the fender will be and starting to get a feel for how, how those surfaces will look, projecting that onto the sidewall surface. So we can start to see the shape and at this stage I'm keeping things angled. Um, I know I'm going to have a radius on the corner there but I'm kind of curious to get the main volumes in and just understand what that looks like. In the first instance I experimented by just putting a fillet in there to create the corner angle but then quickly realised that as a, a surface fillet I, need, I needed to get bigger still with the radius so I elected to sort of formally trim and radius the curves themselves, apply much bigger rads on there and then basically I'm skinning between them to create the lead edge of the fender and back to the main body side up to create sort of the, the sort of chamfered up a bit. That's kind of going the way I want it to now but obviously the surface character itself is flat as a board so putting an extra CV row in so that I can just put a little bit of pump in the surface and then just join the CVs back up so that we can eventually run a fillet down there generally see the character. The top corner, we'll put a little rad on there just to give it graphically a bit, a bit of shape and yeah that's generally starting to look okay now uh, as an activity that's kind of doing the kind of things that I want it to do. The next job is to look a bit more at the transition surface above this, um, wanting to sort of kill the edge of the load deck a little bit, put a bit of a style feature in so I'm putting a line in that's sort of echoing the fenders trim that surface back and then I can literally uh, skin between the two to create that sort of shoulder chamfer line that's kind of, yep, yeah, doing, doing roughly what I want it to do. It's got a bit more visual interest, breaking up the blockiness of the form. You know, we're, we're coming away from an engineering model that's, that's very, very basic. I want to put a bit of styling detail in there. So now here we're putting a little bit of a flick on that body side, sort of like a, a lip surface. And then the uh, underside sill surface is just being tweaked, the character of that. So it's coming away from a pure radius to something with a bit of lead in, a bit more character on it. And overall, yeah, that's that's kind of going in the right direction. That's doing what I want it to do. So it's a case of then extending those profiles through uh, so that we get the character of the fender running down into the lower sill region. And all that's looking pretty good now. So we can assign shaders uh, and just generally get a feel for how that design's starting to look. Now on the underside surfaces where it meets the floor plane, we're needing to project and trim the geometry based on the latest sort of um, flared body side shape. Once we got that in, it's a case of running cordal fillets through design just so that we can really start to see the form. And then in this next little phase of work, I'm starting to think about tidying up this front matte black assembly behind the wheels. We're putting in uh, closing surfaces that join up behind the wheel arches so you don't see daylight in there and just getting the model tidy, extending things through. And obviously in the process of this, because we put that diagonal in, we need to adjust the interface point with the front um, front end cap, if you like. So I slid that forward, reprojected, untrimmed. And I'm generally now just trying to yeah close at the last of these gaps between what we originally had and what we've got now. And as you can see, looking into that wheel arch, there's still a little bit of a, a space there from the old surface, so we need to untrim that, retrim the new surfaces that we've projected on those drafts, just get back to a close shape, and then just grouping things, getting to the point where everything's tidy, and then duplicating through center line in minus X, just to give us you know, what the opposite side of the vehicle will look like. Generally, that's now all starting to look as it should, and we can start to think about the next phase of development where we're getting in a bit more into these variants. So at the minute I'm looking at the um, package delivery vehicle. So what I'm doing is built the sidewall face by putting a simple skin in. I'm trimming the end back now to simulate what I imagine will be a split line to define the edge of that component. And now we're looking to subdivide this main skin surface. I've used a degree three curve to just project lines on surface and use tubular offset to help trim these back to create these partitions if you like between the individual luggage, uh, individual locker spaces. So the same activity again to just get things trimmed back so they can start to see the form, understand what it's doing uh, and then a little bit of drafting around the edges to just give a return which will, which will catch a highlight um, to define sort of the edge of these locker doors as I'm envisaging them. Uh, need to make sure we've got the right shader assigned 
And then just, yeah, this starts to give a feel for what we're doing. We can duplicate that through center line so we can understand what the back end of the vehicle would like. And overall, that's, yeah, looking fairly faithful to the sketch. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. Maybe tweak the color slightly just to sort of get that color balance a bit more like I'd originally visualized it. But yeah, as a delivery vehicle, that's kind of looking as I've intended for the parcel. Now, working as a designer, you always kind of want to explore other options. And one thing that I did wonder with this was that the sort of the lower edge of that end cap molding perhaps just looked a little bit like it was sort of dragging the vehicle down, looking a bit too low and saggy. So what I wanted to do is build a second variant here where I'm retrimming it and sort of lifting the bottom edge up, pulling those curves up to change the profile of that lower edge a bit more. So it's just a bit more up in the air, get a bit more sort of lightness into the vehicle visually. So it's almost a repeat of the process that I walked you through earlier, where you're applying um, a skin between the two um, to, to just build what that surface is going to look like, re-intersecting things, trimming things back so that you can see it, uh, and then starting to apply detailed sort of caudal fillets to just kill that edge. And then it's a case of working back through using the curves that we had originally, which we've modified to represent the lights and the windscreen surfaces. And again, making modifications to them to adjust the CV positions, perhaps even pulling the light in a little bit more so it's a bit more slitty, so it's not so wide, and opening up that sort of screen area display. That's the joy of Alice. You know, you can build variants till the cows come home, you can build different versions of the same geometry. And then when you're going through and reflecting on the design, you can toggle between version A, version B, so that you can compare and contrast in a design review context and really understand you know, whether the design's panning out the way you want it to. Um, it's part, of, part of the fun of working with the software is being able to do this and, and that being able to toggle, being able to see option A and option B and decide is really powerful and lets you make sort of informed design decisions and just you know, check things out with your peers, check things out with your, your design manager boss if you like to make sure that yeah you have progressed the right design. Now with this final phase of bodywork modelling for now, I was looking at the roof moulding. It's not an area of the vehicle that I'd sketched up in detail, but I, I knew I wanted to put some sort of feature in the roof to sort of put a central dip, a recess in. So again, using very basic skins and drafts to, to start to trim things back, you can get a feel for what that recess might look like. And the, the general character of that as an intersect is, yeah, going along the right lines. Uh, it's worth exploring and persevering with. So now I'm using additional curves to basically trim back the upper profiles so that I can apply a freeform blend between the two to get just a little bit of a softer transition in there. Trimming surfaces back as I go. Again, freeform blend to make things join up. Just sort of understand the character of what that roof might look like. I might come back to that and do a different version later on, but this gets the ball rolling on the idea. It lets me see it more in 3D. Okay, well that concludes episode two. I hope you enjoyed the show and found it interesting and informative. Join me again in episode three, where we'll be looking at design variants in a bit more detail for this concept. Thanks very much.